D'Esposito for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chief, thank you for being here uh, this afternoon. Uh, and thank you for your 30 years of commitment to law enforcement. I know that uh, you are well prepared in incident management, special events, active shooters, investigations. Um, I myself spent a career in the NYPD and know that uh, any time politics gets involved in law, in law enforcement, it could be or lead uh, to something very dangerous. It's one of the reasons as to why when I first got here, I, I still question if the Capitol Police Board is the correct oversight and management of the Capitol Police. In your book, you noted how security issues were usually, quote, approached from a political perspective and not based purely on security. What did you mean by that? So oftentimes, if we were having a, a major event uh, that was coming up here, uh, whether it was a, a demonstration, whether it was a uh, health care, immigration, or even one of the um, Supreme Court nominations, we put together a security plan. Then the uh, Sergeant Arms, after they uh, reviewed the security plan, had me go out and brief it to some of the committees. One would often be the Committee on House Administration. Uh, when I'd go out and brief what we're going to do, if we're going to put in, um, like, like um, fence off the east front of the Capitol, uh, I'd often get pushback about, you know, why do you got to be a, block off the east front of the Capitol? Why do you got to have your people in hard gear? Things that a, a commander or a chief of police should be able to make those, uh, those uh, decisions. So you, you weren't able to make decisions as a law enforcement professional. Your decisions were based on political interference. Often t oftentimes there would be interference from, from staffers and, and members themselves asking, you know, a question about why do you got to have them in. So that. individuals that had zero experience in law enforcement were influencing you on the decisions that you had to make for the best interest of this capital. That is correct, sir. You also noted in your book that as part of your role as chief of police, you had to, quote, cater to a multitude of bosses. In the lead up and on January 6th, who would you have been referring to in this statement? That would have been mainly the, uh, the two sergeant arms, trying to work things between the two of them. Moving forward, how do we ensure that security decisions are made solely based on law enforcement expertise and not on politics? You, you know, my number one recommendation is you need to depoliticize the Capitol Police Board. You've got two laws out there, and people always bring up, you know, why does leadership get called into things? It's Congress that has leadership listed on, on laws. You have 2 U.S. Code 1970, 2 U.S. Code 1974 that both list either a review or approval process needed before the Capitol Police can implement those parts of um, the code. One is uh, special police officers. When we brought in outside resources, we had to swear in the special police officers, and there's a requirement that that be approved by leadership. It specifically says the speaker, the spe uh, speaker pro tem, stuff like that. So I would take that out. Let the Capitol Police Board give the, uh, the police department, let them be the final authority of what constitutes law enforcement actions you're going to take. Don't let, there's no reason that members of Congress should be involved or listed on laws as approving it. All that does is politicize things. So take them out of it, get a police board that's willing to make, you know, the appropriate decisions and allow the chief to make decisions to protect the men and women that are our legislators. I know it's rare on Capitol Hill, but it seems to make perfect sense. Going to January 6th, the actual day, is it true that the National Guard was stationed nearby and could have responded quickly had they been authorized to help by the Capitol Police Board? That is, that is correct. They were within eyesight of the, of the Capitol. And one thing I'd say real quick as it came up in the last series of questions, I'd have you enter in uh, Joint Publication 3-28 from the Department of Defense, specifically the emergency authority of the National Guard to respond they can immediately respond. They don't need to wait for anybody else, and there should be no authorization for higher headquarters, you know, instructions. That should be looked at closely. So yeah. you just said that the National Guard was an earshot from... Many were with an eyesight. With eyesight their civil, of the Capitol. With their riot gear, even though they were told not to have so it. So is it also true that the New Jersey State Police made it to the Capitol before the National Guard did? That is correct, sir. Any reason? Um... The National Guard, who's only two miles from our headquarters, you know, sat and waited for the evening crew to come in. While the Pentagon was still sending resources to protect generals' homes, they sent me nobody to help my men and women. Okay, and I only have 30 seconds left. When were you finally given the green light to bring the National Guard to the Capitol? At 2.08 p.m. Um, at at 2.08 p.m., the... So that was over an hour after you originally asked? That is correct. Um, I'm sorry, 2.09 p.m. Um, 2.09 p.m., 
Irving finally gave me approval, because I still remember where I was sitting, because I screamed to the uh, uh, watch commander, mark the time, because I finally got approval to bring in the National Guard. Oh. 